Hi there everybody and welcome to this video. So today we're going to talk about the different types of licenses and user setup within Business Central. Um, so if we start with the uh, licenses that you can get within Business Central, just up on screen right now we have the dynamics.microsoft.com page. So I'll copy this link into the description so you can see for yourselves. But this page just talks us through the GB prices for the different types of licenses that you can get for Business Central. Um, so over on the left hand side here, we have the BC Essentials license, which works out at 57.50 per user per month. Then we have the Premium BC license, which is 82.20 per user per month. And we have the Team Member license, which is £6.60 per user per month. Um, so what are the difference between these licenses? Well, if I scroll down to the little matrix that we have here, we've got on the left hand side all of the different modules that we have within Business Central so we can expand and collapse some of those here. So I've got my general ledger, dimensions, multiple currencies under financial management, and I've got some other modules here as well. And across the top of the matrix here, we've got the Essentials license and we've got the Premium license. And if I scroll down here, what you'll notice is that the Essentials license comes with all modules, um, apart from Service Management and Manufacturing, which are these two, for which you need the Premium license. So the team member license is not on this particular matrix, but what that gives you access to is um, read access within Business Central and you can perform some other actions with the team member license as well. But we'll cover those in uh, another video. Um, so what's important here, guys, is that you can't mix and match between an essentials and premium license. So because the premium license gives you access to the service management and manufacturing modules, if you want to use those modules, all users within your BC environment must have premium licenses. So you can't mix and match between essentials and premium licenses. But you can buy essentials and team members on the same BC environment, and you can also buy premium and team members on the same BC environment. So how do you go about acquiring new licenses? Well, what you'll need to do is get in touch with your Microsoft partner and just let them know how many licenses that you want to acquire and they would acquire them for you and they would show up as licenses in your Microsoft 365 Admin Center where you can apply them to different users. So how do we go about doing that? Well, let me just jump into my BC environment here. And what I'm going to do is just use the waffle on the top left here to go to my admin center. Now, what this does is it brings up my Microsoft 365 admin center. You can see at the top here. And I'm going to come into users and go into my active users here. So over here, I've got a full list of all of the users that I have on this particular Microsoft 365 tenant. So it's just a, a demonstration environment here. And I'm gonna go to my user here, Alan Steiner. So if I click on his username, it brings up this area on the right hand side within which I can go to licenses and apps. And I can see here, I've got my Dynamics 365 Business Central for IW's license. Um, and here I also have a counter that tells me I have 9,974 of the 10,000 licenses available to assign to users. Very simply, I can untick and you can see the license count available to apply goes up by one and I can tick and it goes down by one there. So just one thing I want to make clear here, this is a Dynamics 365 for Business Central for IW's license. And the reason why that is the license type here is because this is a demonstration environment. Um, but in the real world, you would literally see in this list um, a Business Central Premium or Essential or Team Member license, depending on which licenses you acquired, obviously, from your partner. 
And the idea then is you just go down this list and you can tick this box against the relevant user to assign that license to the user. Now, once that's done, what you can do is we can come off this page and I can go back into Business Central and I need to sync the changes that we make in the Microsoft 365 Center for um, our users in Business Central. Now, what I'm going to do in order to make those changes is if I come to search here, I'm just going to type in users and click the associated link here to go to my users page in BC. Now, this is all of the users that we have in our Business Central environment. And the first thing I'll say on this page is that you do not have the ability to add new users from within BC itself. So I can't click this new button here to add a new user. Instead, what I must do is run the update users from Microsoft 365 function in the actions bar here, and that will go back to Microsoft 365 and pull back all of the users that have Business Central licenses into my Business Central environment. So if I click this function here, um, I just get a bit of a disclaimer, a disclaimer saying it could take up to um, 72 hours for, for um, the license changes to take effect. I'm going to hit next here and it will just go away to Microsoft 365 and make the relevant changes. And here, right now, it tells me there are no updates from Microsoft 365. You can exit this guide. So let me say close on here. And what we'll do now is we'll just make a change to the user licenses and see how that's reflected within our Business Central environment. So what I'm going to do first is just show you in another page here that I'm logged in with the login for Alan Steiner. So if I just click on the top here, I can see that this window is logged in with our user, Alan Steiner, who has a Business Central license currently. Now what we'll do is we'll go back to our admin center over here and I'm going to remove that Business Central license from Alan. So let me untick the Dynamics 365 Business Central for IWs. I'm going to say Save Changes and it tells me my changes have been saved. Now, because I've made a change in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, I need to come back to my Business Central environment and I need to say update users from Microsoft 365 once again. So I'm going to hit next and that will go away to Microsoft 365 and it will make the relevant changes. So you can see here this time it tells us that the number of updates ready to be applied is one and that these can be changes to any of the entities that we have here. So name, email address, preferred language, etc. If I want to view a bit more detail, I can go into view changes and over here that I can see that the user that's being affected is Alan S and we are removing the plan that is D365 Business Central for IWs. So if I press finish over here, it will tell me that one out of one updates have been applied in BC and that I can close this guide. So let me say close here. And what we'll do once that's finished is we can just go back in to Alan's login over here. So I'm just logged in again on the window that I was logged in as Alan as. And what I'm going to do on this window is I'm just going to hit refresh. So because of those license changes that we've made, I'm going to hit refresh, which is effectively going to log me out of Business Central and then back in. And what we'll see is that Alan will now struggle to get into Business Central. It won't let him in because he doesn't have a license assigned. So you can see here, it tells us, sorry, we couldn't sign you in. It tells us your account has been authenticated. So he still exists in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, but there is no valid license. And then it tells us to contact our system administrator. 
So that is literally how immediately license changes can take effect in Business Central. Um, so it's quite important here, guys, that if you no longer lead uh, a Business Central license, you can get in touch with your partner and tell them to decommission or remove that license from your Microsoft 365 admin center. Because if you have somebody that leaves um, and you have a license spare, you want to remove that from your BC environment because otherwise you'd still be paying for it. Of course, you can move licenses from one user to another if required as well. That's not a problem. So the only other thing that I want to show you in terms of um, setting up new users is the invite external accountant functionality. Um, so what is this? Um, well, as the name of the action suggests, once um, you're ready to invite your in, uh, external accountant, you can use this action to invite an accountant to access your BC environment. So if I click this action, it just gives me a bit of a disclaimer, which I need to accept. I'm going to press next and I'm going to fill in an email address here. So I'm just going to use my Gmail. I'm going to add a first name and a last name. So we filled in the email address of our external accountant, their first name, their last name, and BC automatically creates this welcome email body. And once we're ready, we can. So this is the message that we'll see once the external accountant has been successfully invited to Business Central. Now, I'm going to hit close on this and what I'll do is I will log in to my Gmail and I will follow through the steps on the email just to log into Business Central. So I'm just going to cut out some parts of the video there because I'm, I'm bringing up my inbox. I'm eventually presented with this enter code screen and I'm going to be sent an email with a code in it by uh, Business Central. And I'm just going to copy that code from my phone email inbox. And I'm going to say sign in. So I've just got this permissions page now because I'm um, accessing the data of an organization. So I have to accept this disclaimer. And what this will do is it will sign me in to the Business Central environment. So we'll just give it a few minutes here and you can see now I'm logged in to Business Central and I have my mail G1 Barra um, email address here. So that is how we can access, uh, provide access to an external accountant to our Business Central environment. And just as a heads up, um, where does that user go when they're set up? Well, if I come back to my other browser page and go back to my admin center for Microsoft 365, what I can do is I can go to my guest users and you can see the email address and the user for our external accountant sits under here and of course we can delete the user from here if we want to revoke that access as well so they work slightly differently to our microsoft 365 ado users um, as your active directory users sorry and obviously once the users are set up within business central we can use the um, permissions functionality so I can come in and I can assign some permission sets to the user. We do have another video on that if you want to uh, see how that's done in a little bit more detail. Um, but that was everything that I wanted to show you with regards to setting up users on Business Central. I hope it was helpful and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much.